and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. On today's episode, we are going to be going through Sam Wallace's article with Chris Heck, talking about everything to do with Aston Villa. The headline of this is Inside Aston Villa's 400 million upgrade to be Champions League ready and crash the big six. So I can imagine some Villa fans are feeling somewhat frustrated with the news of Douglas Luiz potentially going. But there is a bigger picture here. There, there's a bigger picture of, of what Aston Villa are set to become and the ambition of our football club. Now, we know that with PSR, we're just having to do it. We're having to sort of take the brunt of it. We're having to play by the rules. But the ambition of NSWE is huge. And the job of Chris Heck is actually huge as well. So he's done a brilliant uh, interview during this article. So we're going to run through it all. It's quite long. So the specs are going back on because um, they need to, because it's very long. But we're going to learn about everything that's happening off the pitch at Aston Villa this summer, which is vitally, vitally important for us all to know. Um, so we'll go through it then. So look, get it on the screen so you can look at it while I read it. I think that's always the best option. I've got a bit of a cold and hay fever as well, so um, bear with. So the man running Aston Villa to push the estab establish themselves permanently in English football's elite is unequivocal about the club's ambition. Villa want to get there within the next three years, and when they do, they plan to stay there. The new the first new English club in modern Champions League, Villa, of course, won the European Cup in 1982 since Leicester eight years ago, or in the summer of a momentous change at Villa Park. The plan to boost their revenue to 400 million by 2027 has been devised by Chris Heck, president of business operations and a hire from the United States, who is clear that the moment is to be seized. So, a couple of little takeaways from that. Villa want to get their revenue by 2027 to 400 million. So, we know at the minute that we are somewhat away from that, but the plan of Chris Heck is to get Villa 400 million to get us competing with the likes of Man City, Man United, Tottenham, Arsenal, and really, really close that gap. So, this is from the quote then. We've got a quote here then. So, this must be from Chris Heck. There's been such a gap between the Premier League big six and everyone else, he tells Telegraph Sports. What is it going to take for one or two clubs to enter that realm? We have a plan to get there. We, we think we will be able in the next three years. We are definitely playing in that space performance-wise. We are one of the top performing clubs in the world on the pitch. Our manager Unai Emery is arguably top group in the world. We have the infrastructure within an incredible fan base in the Midlands, a brand that is globalised and the owners that are smart and capable to get us there. This is pretty exciting. Not many clubs have the opportunity and we are one of probably two. So we must be talking about Villa and Newcastle. We have a plan for PSR. We are chatting at Villa's central London offices where Heck 55 is based some of the week. At Villa Park, the club are about to announce what Heck says is the biggest hospitality push in European football. 18 new premium offerings, including private club space and other suites. On the pitch, Emery is preparing for the club's first UEFA's biggest club competition since Villa were defending champions in the 82-83 season. It means that Villa Park is undergoing rapid and major upgrade to be completed before the new season begins August 17th. Tens of millions of pounds is the closest Heck will go to putting a figure on the hospitality renovation across three stands, excluding the Holt End. A similar amount is being spent on Bodymore Heath's training ground, including a 40-room hotel for players and staff, as well as new women's team and academy facilities on the pitch. So we know the hospitality is coming in every single stand, and it's... <sighs> vitally important that it, it comes because we need to close that gap. We've got three years to make four to make that four hundred million pound revenue. That's the aim. That's what we've set. And that is the way in which they view a way of Aston Villa being able to do that. 
The other aspect of it is the hotel at Bodymore. Now, we knew last year that Unai wanted this hotel. And what this hotel will enable us to do is when we've played in a Champions League game and we flew back maybe that night, instead of them having to then have to go back and have massages and then go back home, they can stay the night. And that is the plan as well. In the back of my head, I've got a PSR plan in the back of my head. We know Chelsea have sold a hotel. Now, are Villa going to be able to maybe sell a hotel and create even more revenue through selling our own hotel? So that's something maybe we can potentially keep an eye on. So we've then got bigger revenue, high-spec hospitality, London offices for the biggest club in Birmingham. Get that one in there. These are the kind of priorities that can prick the temper of fans. Yet this is the game now, and both Manchester United and Liverpool have lo have long had London bases. We meet a day after the Premier League AGM and Villa's proposal to raise permitted losses under profit and sustainability to 135 million over three seasons has failed. Suarez will himself go to call PSI an anti-competitive obstacle to the ambitious clubs like this. It's Heck's job to find a way around it. The challenges of PSR compliance are huge. John Duran, the Colombian international striker, signed for the MLS last summer as a target for Chelsea. Douglas Luiz, we know, to um, Juventus. Our owners are very engaged on this, as well as Unai Heck says. What I would say is we have a plan, and I said this yesterday on, on Twitter, that we have a plan. It's a harder path than the big six. We have to be more creative, think differently, while they have sustainable businesses that they can just keep going. We think it will take us another three years to build that sustainable business. In the meantime, we have some pretty capable individuals on the sporting side who are working very similar to how I am working. He's talking about Vidagani and Monchi. The first year we were successful, we generated 50 million, and that's our plan to generate 50 million more each year. That has never been done before, and we are doing it. We are already well on our way. We were 219 million annual turnover. So, what is the magic number we'd like to get to? We think 400 million to get into the game of sustainability. We had a path to get there. We just came back from the league meetings as well. We know that what we are up against, and we almost feel that we have to do this our own way because the rules are not set up to reward an ambitious club or a challenger. It, it, it changing the three-year permitted losses to PSR to a top limit under refinement didn't go through, but I want to keep, I don't, I don't want to keep worrying about when something doesn't evolve in 11 years and it will cost living alone, you scratch your head. If the Bank of England says inflation of 105 million for an 11-year period, then 105 million is now 143. You would think we would follow the same logic, but the league has decided not to. I don't want to waste my time griping about it. I want to find a new path. And I think that, that where Aston Villa enters into the big club realm, we have to just get there. So how do we get there within the rules? Well, you try and work harder, get smarter and be better at what you do. Not just one type of English football fan. Heck came in from 33-year US sport marketing career in the NBA in major soccer league. He undoubtedly had restless energy to push ahead. There was a new kit deal with Adidas, the first with the German giant in which Suarez is a significant shareholder in the club's history and a front-of-shirt online gambling sponsor, Betano. The work at Villa Park will include transforming police holding cells in the north stand built to accommodate unruly fans in a new suite, the cells, will be one of the 18 newly themed offerings, encompassing 500 hospitality tickets across different price levels. There's a huge new superstore, the warehouse, and adjoining match day food and drink space, which will eventually also become a 4,000 4, capacity. Um, if we've got any more. Uh, there, will be, there will be more season tickets as per fans' requests on sale next season. And the more... The season after that, although change has come at a cost, around 900 season tickets have already been moved seats. As for big question of the proposed demolition of the North Stand for something bigger and better, the club's view is that it will simply did not make sense. Um, how do you use what money you have for the best for the club? Heck says we could knock down a stand, add seats, and take 17 years to pay it off. That was the maths, I thought. 
This didn't make very much sense. We don't have the infrastructure to add 10,000 seats in the blink of an eye. We were also playing extremely well and had the vision in November that we could be playing in the Champions League. Would we want to knock down a quarter of the stadium and have a small venue, 36,000 when we're in the Champions League? He's leading the club somewhere new. Uh, instead, the plan is to maximise the rapid success on the pitch quickly as possible. I appreciate it's an inconvenience uh, for season ticket holders to be moved. I really do. I just hope that we can be clear and that everybody understands what the big picture is. That is the fans are first. And number one thing we want to deliver to the fans a winning team. This is very, very good. Very, very good indeed. Right, where else can we start? There he says, no prospect to move away from Villa Park. First, it costs a lot of money. Secondly, it takes a lot of time. We are striking when the iron is hot. Not many people can start a project while you are playing so well. You start a project and then expect to play well. Six to eight years later, we are playing well now. OK, how fast can we catch that train? We are staying. We are saying we will catch that train. We have three more years. We are on the right pace after one. Uh, we have the same vision, but he's leading this club to a place that we haven't seen. You cannot underestimate, he's a remarkable individual. Not only is he how he works with players individually as a team, but also his support for the group with the coaches. We are running something that is transformational for the club. It really is. Within Villa, uh, there is a clear and strong sense that this one of the less heralded ownership resolution revolutions Outside of the Premier League, six only Villa, Newcastle, Leeds, Blackburn, Leicester, City have qualified post-92 format for the Champions League. It's not easy and it's not for the faint heart, but this has the makings of an incredible story in front of our eyes. Why should everyone care? The big six is going to make room for one or two more clubs and we are going to be one of them. This year is Villa's 150th anniversary and Heck points out that they have advantage of being the biggest club, the biggest city Outside Greater London, we are in a really interesting time for English football right now. It's been a good decade. The big six stability, meaning they have kept everyone out. Newcastle last year, us this year. I think it's changing and I wouldn't bet against us. Boom! Up the Chris Heck. Well done. Very, very good interview. Outlining just what the club's vision is and, and how we want to get there and what we're striving to do. So I know a lot of you have had questions and, and and qualms and and on and all of these things regarding off-field issues but it's pretty much been outlined in this interview of why we're doing it what we're doing how we're going to get there and what the future ambitions are so you know I, I just think it's it's really good I'm I'm so proud that we're not a club that just sort of just wants to just survive and just be happy we got there. You know, this club is striving for the very, very best. You won't find many clubs that are striving with this much ambition. And when we have a little setback with PSR, deal with it, move on and go to that next challenge. And that's that's my mentality in life anyway, any little setback, any thing, any bump in the road, just, it's just a bump, just get on with it, deal with it and move on and we've got massive ambitions here and I I, I can't say a, a bad a, a bad word about it if I'm being honest, um, that's just my honest opinion, I, I want this, I've wanted this football club all my life to have ambition and drive and want to push to succeed and now we've finally got it I'm I'm all over it and I'm 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 not sort of thinking negative about any given scenario if this is the if this is the aim if this is the dream then I am fully fully on board because for me personally as a villa fan I've seen quite a lot of crap over the years and a club that's been lost in its direction, a club that's been lost in its way, a club that's been scrambling around in, in dark times. And now we've got people now that want this football club 
to compete and succeed at the highest level. So I'm not going to sit here and mope and moan about certain things when this is what this is what we're trying to get to. So for me, massively on board, fully on board. I love ambition. I love when people talk about ambition. So for me, super, super positive. I wanted to bring you this interview because I thought it was absolutely brilliant. So up the villa, up the off field. Let's go.